God bless you for loving him. Um, I want to say a very big thank you to Pastor and um, Pastor Didi and Pastor Wumi for having me. I'm grateful. I'm truly, truly honored. Um, and um, you have taken very good care of me. The Lord will take good care of you. To all the protocol people who have been looking after me, I feel false. Can I stay and apply for Canadian citizenship? Thank you so much. I'm very, very grateful. The God of heaven, we honor you. And to all the wonderful women in the house, can I hear you? I think you can do better than that. Let the men make, make the men feel that they missed something yesterday. <laughs> Maybe they will try and get crushed next year. <laughs> you may be seated in his awesome presence. I bring you greetings from Philadelphia. The church in Philadelphia is praying for us. And I believe God, that God will hear their prayer and move in this place today. My husband also sends his warmest regards. He's also praying for us. Um, that's my husband of 42 years. Well, 42 this year, October. I said to them at the women's conference yesterday, I said, I don't know how we both did it, that he didn't kill me and I didn't kill him. <laughs> and after 42 years, we are still together. Praise God. Choir, we need a move, don't we? How many of us need God to visit us today? Just that chorus part of it, we need to move because of time. I want everyone to be in an attitude of worship, attitude of prayer. We need a move. The Lord is here. We need a move. Lift up your voice to him. Lord Jesus. You can rise up and we lift your hands to heaven. Visit me, Lord, today. Oh, oh God. We need a Come and do what you love to do. We need your touch, we need your presence, Lord. We need a move. We are here for you. We are here. to do in your life. You came here into his presence. You are not going to live the way you came. Tell him, Lord, move upon me. Move upon the waters of my life. In Genesis, we are told that the earth was in chaos. Darkness, chaos upon the face of the earth. And the Spirit of the Lord moved over the waters. And God began to speak and things began to happen. The Spirit of God is moving in this place right now. Use your mouth to speak what you want God to do in your life. In your mouth, there is power. Speak to Him. You are made in the image of God. Creative forces on you. Speak life to yourself. I live, I do not die. I prosper. Above all things, my soul, my body prospers. The peace of God is mine. He gives me peace beyond human understanding. By his stripes I am healed. My body is the temple of the Spirit of God. It's not the habitation of sickness or disease. The favor of God is upon me. He surrounds me with favor as a shield. Speak. 
your life. Great is the peace of my children. They are taught of God. No way what children here. My children hear God. My children obey God. I'm working hard, Lord. Let me eat the fruit of my labor. You've said I will work. I will eat the fruits of my labor. Bless me, Lord. Prosper my way. Father, we bless you this morning. And we honor you. Thank you, precious Father. For with our God, nothing is impossible. Yesterday, he said to us, he said, relax. He said, I'm a responsible father. Whatever burden that you are carrying, it's not yours to carry. You have a father who carries your burden. And God is saying to you this morning, relax. Give it to me, I'm the burden bearer. Some of you here, you are carrying heavy burdens. It's crushing you. God says it is not your burden, it is his. Give it to him. Cast your care upon him. Cast that responsibility upon him. He's able to carry it. Maraba shata la bababa he. Reke sheke tele prohibaha. Mata patapa he. Father, we praise you this morning. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we are grateful. Your word says, as we say in your ears, so you will do. Lord, your children have spoken life to themselves. Lord, they have spoken blessings concerning their lives. As they have brought to you this morning, Jehovah God, I pray, according to your word, because you cannot lie, you will do in their lives. I pray, oh God of heaven, for that person carrying that, cr that burden is crushing. It's like a heavy stone has been placed on you and it's crushing you. I pull you out from under that burden right now. Lord, I ask that you will lift that burden yourself. It's as if some, it's as if something that does not belong to you is being shifted to you and it's a burden. I cast it out and I command that it go back to where it's coming from. You will not carry another man's burden in the name of Jesus. That, that person who says, it's my, this my head, this my head, this my head. Lord, touch that head in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. As we continue, Lord God, let your spirit move amongst us. Lord Jesus, walk in the midst of your children. Touch them, Lord. Touch them. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. You may be seated. And very quickly, because of our time, the women have been talking about purpose. And their thing has been awake, awake, awake. So the title of this message is Wake Up to Purpose. Wake Up to Purpose. What is purpose? Purpose is the object to watch towards which one strives or for which one exists. It's an aim, it's the goal. And when you live according to purpose, you do not, it's not accidental living. It's intentional. We are not accidents. We are products of a God that is intentional, a God that is strategic, and a God that is purposeful in his design. 
when you look at the very beginning in the book of Genesis, the Lord said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him, I want you to listen to the purpose for which he made man. He said, let him have dominion. Say dominion. dominion. So for anyone here who your life is out of control, it's like you do not have control over your life. Things just happen. And you wonder, you look at yourself and you say, what kind of life is this? I want you to say to yourself now, I have dominion. I have dominion. You are not supposed to be controlled and just tossed up and down anyhow. You are created by God for dominion. You are the one who is supposed to be in control and in charge. Say that I am in charge. I am in charge. And you are in charge under God. Amen? Amen? It's not that you are in charge to do what you like. You are in charge under God. Because when God created Adam and put him in the Garden of Eden, he said, have dominion, but under me. And the minute Adam wanted to have dominion without, without being under God, God threw him out of the garden. So you have to be under God. You have been made to be a role. You are not created to be a backbencher. Hmm? So when you come to church, don't sit in the back and carry your pocket book. The women, the, we call the pocket book. I don't know whether you call it, call it back here. And disappear after church. You are, you are made to be a rule. You are made to have control. You are made to be doing something. You are made to be relevant. Anywhere you are. Whether in the church, whether in your house, in your family, whether in your workplace, you have to be relevant beyond other people. Did I hear an amen? amen? So don't be the backbencher. And don't be the bench warmer. You know how, and don't be the one that is um, uh, sitting and um, criticizing. You know how when we go to watch the match, what do you play here in the U.S.? We play uh, football. You, you play soccer here. Uh -huh. Our own um, football there is. So here you play soccer. You are the one who goes to the yeah, stadium. Ah, did he see that ball? Why didn't he kick the ball? You are the one who sits and makes uh, and passes commentary. If it's that easy, why don't you go there and play? <laughs> so don't be that person. Be that person who is actually on the field playing. Whatever area God places you on, don't be a backbencher. Don't be a bench warmer. You are made to be a role. Everyone has been created by God for a sphere of influence. Everyone. Everyone. You heard me thanking the protocol people. You may think, what do they do? They just go to the airport, they drive people around, they are driver, they are... No, it's more than that. Because if they did not show up at the airport when they showed up, and I got there, and I was upset, or I was um, 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 concerned, um, or I'm scared. Every anointing dries up there. Everything. There are times that I go to places and I struggle. Not because God did not want to bless them, but because they were not prepared, or they did not honor the grace of God. I'm not saying that men of God or women of God are... Uh, um, special beings from uh, special places. No, that's what I'm just, that, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when, because of the service they provide, there's something that honor does. Honor begets honor. God says, I will honor those who honor me. And you are honored this morning because some of you honored a servant of God. Amen. So you have to prepare. When you have a guest coming to your house, what do you do? You clean up your house, don't you? If you own your clothes, especially the men who take off their shoes and put it on the dining table, and the wife will be saying, ah, ah, I cleaned this place yesterday, and you are driving that poor woman crazy. She will carry shoe. She will fold clothes. The one she folded yesterday, by the time she comes the next uh, one hour, it's already spread out. I'm sure the, those kind of men are not in this church. They are, praise God. Good job, man. <laughs> I want you.
to be prepared. There's a, there's a passage in the Bible in, in Genesis where God visited Ada, Abraham. The Bible says Abraham was sitting under the oak tree in Mamre and three men showed up. And when Adam saw, uh, Abraham saw them, he ran to go and meet them. And he said, my Lord, come in here, come in here. And it was God visiting Abraham. If Abraham was not prepared, do you know the blessing he received that day would have gone by? Oh, he was prepared. He was hospitable. He was on point. He ran. He said, come in here. What can I get you? And when they ate, somebody says God does not eat. Well, I don't know. But that passage said that they ate and they drank. He, he, get, he served them meat, he served them bread, and he served them milk. Not the kind of genetically engineered one they are giving us now. This one is real meat. And, <laughs> and then he blessed them. He said, Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? He said, by this time, this is not part of my message. I'm sure you know. So there's somebody here who God wants to bless. I want you to pay attention because it's also a prophetic meeting. Amen? Amen. God said, by this time, this season, you would carry a child, a son. And why didn't he say, you are going to have a child tomorrow? Because there are some things that have to grow. If somebody becomes pregnant today and has a baby by tomorrow, will you go and name that child? Pastor, will you go and do naming ceremony? <laughs> Nine months. So some of the things you are believing God for, he's already working on it. Will you be patient? Yes. Uh -huh. So that we have the kind of blessing that when pastor, when they say, pastor, he will say, I'm coming. Not the one he will say, I don't know where this one came from. <laughs> Praise God. You are made to be a room. You are not created to be a backbencher. You are not created to be a bench warmer. You are not created to be a passerby. You are created to be part of the action. And no excuse is permitted. Amen? Amen. No excuse is permitted. The Bible says that we are all members in one body. And all the members have a function. Romans 12 verse 4. So don't sit in this church and, and, and not do anything. Say, I, I don't know what I can do. There's something you can do, unless you are not part of the body. And whatever is not part of the body, usually they take it off, right? If there's something that is not part of your body, if there's a growth that is not supposed to be part of your body, what do they do? They, you go to the, and they cut it off. So if you are part of the body, you cannot not be doing something. There must be something. There must be something. Many years ago, my mom came to visit with us in our church. And after service, she will begin to pick up all the things that people dropped. And, and from there, it's, it's the older women joined her in church. And they started to do that. Because we will look at some of the older and we will say, ah, they are older women now. And we won't give them anything. Older women find something to do. Older men find something to do. Young people find everybody in church. Do what? Find. So I thought to do. Because you want to be blessed. And you are part of this body. It is us all together, everybody doing their own part that makes the body work. And anything that is not working in the body is taken off. All you need is prepared. All you, God says you should not fret. If you are fretting in this house, God is saying to you today, do not fret. No matter how big that thing may appear to you, no matter how heavy it may appear to you, God is prepared for it. Are you listening? It's not about you. It's about the God that created you for a purpose. Is it when you were created, is it when you were born that God now provided oxygen? Well, were you the one who brought oxygen to the world? When you came, what did, you, did you find oxygen here? When you came, you just took a breath and you, shout, and you cried. And the doctors and nurses said, ah, this one is alive, right? God prepared everything. 
In the Garden of Eden, the Bible says that he, he, he prepared the, the, the trees, the, the rivers, the fish, the animals. He provided everything. And the last thing he created was who? Was you. It was you and I. Everything we will need was provided before he brought us on the scene. Before you are right here in Canada, everything you will need, God already prepared for you. Before you were born, everything you need, God already prepared for you. Before you got married, everything you will need, God prepared for you. Before you started that job, everything you will need, God prepared. Our God is a God of preparation. You remember I said that he's intentional, he's strategic, and he's full of purpose. And therefore, stop fretting. Tell your neighbor, don't fret. All you need is already prepared. And our nothing wastes with God. There's nothing that wastes with God. He is the first creator of the sustainable culture. You know, the, our new culture, we don't want things to waste. We take plastic, we recycle. We take paper, we recycle. I went into one store yesterday, or two days ago, and um, I saw a lovely bag. And it said, from, made from recyclable plastic. I'm like, ah, ah. And if you looked at it, it looked like a leather. I'm like, wow. Our God was the first person to introduce sustainable culture. It, when we die, our body falls to the ground and becomes dust again. From dust we were formed, and from dust we return. And that goes and re, you know, not, nourishes the ground, and new life comes from it. Let somebody shout hallelujah. In church, people don't want to hear that one day we will die. We will die one day. And if you don't die, Jesus will come back again. Whichever way, whether you die or Jesus comes, we are going to heaven, I hope. Uh -huh. Whether you like it or not, we are going to... Uh, well, well, and some people are going to hell. You know that, don't you? I, I'm sure there's nobody like that here. Uh, I'm sure you all gave your life to Jesus. Of you, you realize that you are a sinner. You realize you are born in sin. You realize that no good work that you do will take you to heaven. And you confess your sins to the Lord. And you said, Lord, forgive me. I know I'm a sinner. I'm born a sinner. Forgive me for all the things I have done wrong. Please come and enter my heart and become my Lord and personal Savior. I hope you have prayed that prayer. And if you haven't, we will pray before we leave here today. He's the first creator of the sustainable culture. He says, from dust we came. From dust to dust we will return. In nature, nothing is wasted. Nothing. Nothing is wasted in nature. The worms that we see and we think, ah, what is this? Do you know that they have a work they do? The worms that come out when it rains. We are told that they form, they make holes in the ground that allows the soil to be aerated. So that when you plant, the plants can receive nourishment. There is nothing that is wasted. And because our God is a God of intention, because our God is a God of, of um, strategy, because our God is a God who, who, um, who, who, who plans, we must understand the season that we are in now. There is an urgency for us to do. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent us. God sent us here for a purpose. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent us because the night is coming when no one can walk. The night is coming when no man can walk. So we have to walk and we have to be intentional as we do that work. How do we tie all of this into purpose? If you look at the story of Esther, our God is intentional. Our God is strategic. Our God is the God of purpose. We look at the story of Esther. And the Bible tells us, how many of us are familiar with Esther in the Bible? Is there anybody here who doesn't? If you are familiar, put up your hand. So I won't have to read too. Okay, wonderful. Good. That many of you are Bible students. If you remember the story of Esther, very quickly, Esther chapter 1 verse 12. Before Esther, there was a queen. Her name was Vashti. And Vashti did something that annoyed the king, her husband. 
The king said, I want, you to, I want to show off your beauty. You know how men are with their wives? They want to show off, my wife can cook, my wife is beautiful, my wife is this. So he said, and this one was a beautiful woman. He said, come and I want to show you off so that all the other men will be jealous. The woman said, ah, am I a shop mannequin? What kind of disrespect is that? I'm not coming. And the king was incensed. And his um, associates were annoyed. You know how people will not, um, when something good is going on, they want to spoil it. Instead of them to say, ah, king, have patience now. Uh, have mercy on the woman. He said, remove her. If anybody is telling you, remove your wife, don't answer them. Oh. Don't, they are not your friend. He said, remove her. But you know, in everything, God has a purpose. And he removed her. When it is your turn, God will create a vacancy for you. A vacancy was created. Not, as, not, not in the kitchen of the king, but in the bedroom of the king. And so the, Esther emerged. And if you think you can do something, believe me, there's nobody who is better qualified than you. So don't be arrogant. Vashti thought she was beautiful until Esther showed up. You will show up. <laughs> you will show up big time. When Esther showed up, everybody was like, wow. And it wasn't the kind of show up where everything, you know, these days if they make you up, you yourself, you won't recognize yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the kind of beauty that Esther had. Esther had the beauty that comes from above. May God's beauty come upon you yeah. in the name of Jesus. Esther showed up. And Esther thought the reason why I'm in the palace is because God has favored me. It's because God has made a way for me. It's because it, she was saying like we usually say, ah, I have received a big breakthrough. I have received a breakthrough. But it was more than that. And she was in that place for years until one day, purpose showed up. And all of her Jewish people were under threat of perishing. The reason why you are here is not just for you. It's because there's a whole lot of people who are perishing in one way or the other. Maybe spiritually, maybe financially, maybe physically, me me medically. There's something going on somewhere. There's a problem somewhere that God is going to call you to solve. If you are a medical doctor, there's something. If you are a research person, there's something. If, 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 if you are a financial person, there's something. If, they, if you are a business person, there's something. There's a problem that God is going to call you to solve that is beyond you. She was having a good time in the palace. She was eating and drinking with the people who are, who are the top of government in, that, in, 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 in Persia. And one day, God said, purpose is knocking. And her uncle came to her. The uncle, and again, it's not about how you were born. Esther was an orphan. It was her uncle who adopted her and raised her. The Bible says he raised her as his child. If you have, some, if you have a child with you, please take care of them, whether they are your biological or not. And if, you, if God graces you, adopt children. There are many children there who are praying for parents. That's the way parents, some people are praying to have children. Who is going to answer the prayer of those children who are praying for parents? It's you and I. He had adopted her. We have to run because of my time. And what happened? She said, ah, I can't do this. Nobody goes to the king because there's protocol. There's a, there's a process, there's a system for, all, for me to be able to approach the king. Moreover, the king has not sent me for me in a long, long time. I want us to know that if you depend on physical attraction, it will fail one day. As beautiful as Esther was, after a while, the king just put her aside. Did not call for her. Because there were other women. May God not replace us. But when she arose to purpose, she was summoned back. If you feel as if you have been forgotten and put somewhere, go and start praying and ask God, what is my purpose? Because when your purpose shows up, you will show up. 
Mordecai sent to Esther and said, Esther, you have to do something. Esther said, I can't go unless the king sends for me. Mordecai said, Esther, this is the reason why you are born. God created you for a time like this. Understanding purpose puts things in perspective. Tell your neighbor when you understand purpose, it will put things in perspective for you. And when you have things in perspective, you will be able to focus. Purpose helps you to focus. In Esther 4 verse 16, Esther said, Ah, if this is the reason why I was born, I will go. And if I perish, I perish. When you say that to God, God begins to move in your behalf. Purpose keeps you on the straight and narrow path. It keeps you from wandering. It keeps you from succumbing to distractions. May God reveal your purpose to you in the name of Jesus. And when you are focused, when you understand your purpose, when you understand that time is running out, time will not wait for you. You will begin to move. The time for you to jump into your purpose is now. Do, no longer procrastinate. And whatever you need to do to fulfill that purpose, begin to do it now. Don't postpone registering for that course till next year. Go and do it now. Don't, 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 don't postpone, you know, um, helping that person that God has spoken to you about till tomorrow. When you get home, go and do it now. Whatever it is God is asking you to do, now is the time of salvation. That's what the Bible says. The night is nearly over. The days are done. So let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, not tomorrow. If you are a person of purpose, and you all are, because God does not waste his resources. You are God's resource. You are too loaded to play. You are too loaded to play. Don't spend your time playing. You don't have time to play anymore. You are too loaded to play. Many are dependent on you. If Esther had not gotten up, do you know that a lot of people would have died? If you do not go and study that medicine that God says that you should do, do you know that a lot of people will die? If you do not go and do that social work that God asks you to do, do you know that a lot of children and a lot of people who need help will perish? If you do not get up and give to this legacy project, do you know that a lot of souls and a lot of lives, the school academy that wants to be, that, that is supposed to be built, do you know that a lot of lives will be wasted? Now, now is the time for you to act, not tomorrow. How will you do this? How? How will you do all of this? You have to begin to draw near to God. Read your Bible. Pray. Study the Bible. Find the promises. Meditate on the word of God. You have to keep good company. Don't isolate yourself. Don't keep yourself away from other people. You have to be vigilant. What can you do? What needs to be done? What is God saying? You have to be vigilant to see what it is that God is speaking to your life. You, can, you will hear it from the pastor ministering from the pulpit. You will hear it from the, when you read your Bible. God will be speaking to you. Circumstances around you will be telling you the things that need to be done. And you want to find a mentor. You want to be discipled. If there's school of disciples here, register. You have a membership class, register. Bible college, register. You have to grow spiritually. And you also have to grow in the things that you do, whether it's your job, your career, any training that you need to get, go and get it so that you will be better. And you have to serve. You have to serve. You have to grow. You have to grow. You have to serve. Not everybody will hold a microphone. Not everybody will hold a mic microphone. You have to serve. And in all of this, I'm, I was so happy when I saw that the theme for next year women's conference is wisdom. Because when I, when I was preparing, God said, you will win. Okay, how will you win? Number one, by wisdom. 
The W is for wisdom. The I is for an insatiable desire for God. You need to pray. You need to fast. You need to uh, study the word. You need to be in fellowship. And the N is for you have to you have to remember always now always remember the child of who you are now remember the child of who you are you will win in the name of Jesus Amen. as you walk according to purpose as you are awake to purpose you will win Amen. let's rise up on our feet as we talk to the Lord this morning as we talk to the Lord this morning God is strategic, God is intentional, and God is the God of purpose, and you must be the same. If you are in this house today and you do not have Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I want to give you that opportunity. You know, I already said it in the, in, in, during the sermon that, are you going to heaven? If you are going to heaven, then you must give your life to Jesus. You must repent of your sin. You must surrender your life you, to the one who has a plan for you, for the one who created you, to the one who has strategies in place to put you where he wants you to be. Is there anyone in the house today? You do not have Jesus in your heart as your Lord and personal Savior. I want to quickly pray with you. Just wave your hand to me and I will pray with you. You say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want my life to have... I want my life to have a purpose. God's purpose, not just any purpose. I want to fulfill God's purpose. You cannot fulfill God's purpose unless you are God's child. Anyone, just wave your hand to me. You are saying, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Praise God. All right, then. So, see, there's no one here. It means that you need to do some more work. If everyone in the church is born again, it means that you need to go out and bring people who are not born again. Amen. That's one of the things God expects you to do. When you are coming next Sunday, bring somebody who is not yet born again. Even if you have to pick them up on the street, pick them up and bring them so that their own souls will be saved too. That's one of the reasons why God created you to help him populate his kingdom. Now I want you to lift up your hand. What is that thing that God has been telling you to do? What is that thing that you, has been in your heart and you are saying, I can't do this thing. Uh, I don't have the qualifications. Um, I don't have anybody to help me. Talk to the Lord. Because if God is giving you something to do, he already has the resources provided. Tell him, Lord, help me. And if you are not clear about your purpose, also talk to him. Say, Lord, help me to identify my purpose. It was Mordecai who helped Esther to identify her purpose. He said, Esther, you were born for a time like this. Talk to the Lord. It is this Weak, how do you can do? Father, we thank you. In Jesus' most precious name. And everybody said, Amen. Can we jump to